So in this segment, we're here with Zach Savage from Underwater Lighting uh, at LMC, where we've been spending our morning, and we're going to learn a little bit about more, more about underwater lights. So, Zach, we've got something behind us that I think is a little bit unusual. Tell me about what we're looking at. Absolutely. This is actually a uh, few years old Hargrave that has never had underwater lights on it before. So as you can see, there's no holes in the hull. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do on this boat is basically have to drill new holes. If it's cored, we have to seal them and then obviously put the lights in straight away. This differs from normal boats that we work on because they normally have underwater lights positioned in the exact right way. Um, and that's just a case of removing and placing them in. So this boat is a unique challenge, but it's also exciting because we get to position the lights exactly where they're going to be most beneficial. Um, and then the owners are going to have beautiful lights to light up the water. So let's back the boat up just a little bit. Um, this is unusual in this day and age to yes. not have an underwater light in the boat already, especially on a boat that's a couple of years old. Mm -hmm. I've been around the industry for quite some time, and I remember when bringing underwater lights in was all the rage. It was the new thing. Yep. And we had a lot of different things to consider. So give me a little background or a little history on where did we start with under light, underwater lights, when did that start, mm -hmm. and what were the technologies that were available when they first came to market? Absolutely. Underwater lights basically started around 1991. Uh, Peter Urquhart of Underwater Lights Limited, who I work with, uh, put the first light on a boat then. It was a large soup yacht, okay. and that's really where the technology was started on the larger boat side. Um, he developed the technology to bring these 150 watt HID lamps, which generate a fair amount of heat into a contained housing that was suitable and approved for soup yacht use. Over the years and a decade or so later, the technology then became on fishing boats. It was the must-have accessory for sport fishers all around the world. Well, that was my area. I mm -hmm. was in the sport fishing world. Yep. And one of the things that the guys started to do was to sword fish at night. Absolutely. And they liked to have a light in the bottom of the boat mm -hmm. because they felt like it attracted the fish. And it actually did. So Absolutely. we had the, I guess those were HID lights or halogen lights back in those days, weren't they? Back in those days, we they also developed a smaller light, which used a xenon bulb, which was a lot lower wattage right. and could run off the DC power, which people, depending on who you ask, would prefer to use. Okay. So there were a couple of different sizes using that technology. Um, so in the early 2000s, the craze really took off. Okay. and all those boats started to use them. And then with the advent or introduction of LED around 2005, 2006, meaning smaller lights with good output in LED at a good price, meant that it was available to all sizes of boats and every type of customer. So we actually learned a little bit earlier in the day today about light emitting diodes and the way the, we've got a lot of different varieties of LED light available. Um, but, but backing up to the earlier days, one of the things that I remember is when guys would put lights in the transom of the boat, mm -hmm. they had to be very careful about not running the lights while the boat was up on a plane. Absolutely. Because they developed a lot of heat, if I'm not mistaken, didn't well, the, they? The bulb technology absolutely generated a huge amount of heat, and okay. the technology wasn't there for thermal protection back then. Okay. So if the boat lights were left on when the boat was out of the water like this, or if you're going along, especially on a sport fish boat with the transom exposed, right. the lights on, and when the water came back, the glass lens could potentially crack. And that okay. did happen back then, which is why LED was kind of was so well received back then, because the perception is they don't generate a huge amount of heat, which technically isn't true. Um, but it, they all had thermal cutouts as well, so they could easily protect themselves. I so understand. the technology was seen as a way forward uh, with it was very expensive back in the early days, but a lot of people adopted it very, very quickly. Well, LED lighting has taken on, it, it's taken over the world. I mean, we, we've got yeah. LED lighting pretty much everywhere we look. Automobile industry is all LED. Aviation industry mm -hmm. is switching all over to LED. Uh, and in your home, Absolutely. everybody's buying LED bulbs now. You've got courtesy lights, you've got direct lights, you've got white lights, you've got neutral lights, you've got yellow or mm -hmm. softer lighting. You've got a variety of different things. So in the yachting industry, when we're talking about putting in underwater lights, which mm -hmm. you guys have a unique distinction. Every time somebody talks about an underwater light, they're talking about your company. Pretty so much, So that's yeah. a pretty good idea. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like the Kleenex of lighting. Absolutely. Which makes a ton of sense. So we're gonna do an application of underwater lighting in a boat like this 106 Hargrave. What are the things that we're gonna consider first? Well, because this is a virgin hull, we kind of want Let's wanna... take a peek at what we've Abs got. Absolutely. So because this is a virgin hull, uh, we're gonna wanna decide first what the customer wants. Do they, with LED, we have so many more options nowadays. You okay. can have your white, your blue, you can have white and blue in the same fixture, you can have color change, you, you can pretty much have anything you want. So, the so we've got R RGB or we got the full scale, correct? Ex RGBW is what we okay. provide, which is red, green, blue, and white, because okay. everyone wants still that white light. 
Um, and then yes, you can have individual colors, dual colors, and really just what the customer wants. Oh, the whole spectrum of the rainbow. Absolutely. Now, popular these days is color change. It's probably right. about 70% of what we sell, okay. which just shows the trend in the industry. Back in 2005 to 2010, it was white was predominant. And right. from then till about a year or so ago, it was blue. Everybody had to have blue. Right. But now that. it's a mixture of everything, but color change is really starting to dominate. Because why have one color when you can have hundreds? Sure. And the benefit of that is when you're going to different areas of the world, taking your boat to the Bahamas, up to New York, or wherever you want to go, the quality of the water will react differently to different colors. So in the Bahamas, white looks beautiful. Up in New Jersey, white will turn brown really quick. I yeah, mean, it makes the water look terrible. Terrible, but green in those waters looks unbelievable. Okay. And in fact, my favorite color right now is a teal. So it's a 100% blue, 50% green, and that just Sounds looks like a Miami sick. Dolphins fan to me. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> so, and in the Mediterranean, what do you see? In the Mediterranean, uh, it's normally blue or white is okay. kind of the predominant thing. Because of the clarity of the water. Clarity, uh, clarity of the water. And Americans, in my opinion and experience, like to adopt these technologies first as well. Sure. So whilst color change is still in Europe, it's just not on the same scale that we have here. I understand. I get a lot of pushback on some people saying color change is very garish, very Miami, you know, a little over the top. But it can be as crazy or as subtle as you want it to be. I have a customer who likes blue, that's all he wants. Right. So we turn the lights on blue, and over half an hour it changes to a very light blue and then back down. Okay. So you don't notice or perceive the change, but it's there, and that's just what So you can wants. work in one color spectrum and then refine it a little bit more. Absolutely. So with computer controlling on these, you can do virtually anything you want, is what a you're saying. Absolutely. We can customize the light show to colors for the Miami Dolphins, to right. holidays, Valentines, Christmas themes. Okay. And again, with individual control over each light, we can do scenes that go back and forward, which we call the Knight Rider, which, you know, okay. anyone old enough to remember that great TV <laughs> series will understand. Kit on the back of your boat is an attraction. Enough, yes. And all we can go as garish and crazy as you want. So it okay. really is down to a personal preference. Okay. So when you explain this to customers now, that it can be very subtle or it can be crazy, a lot of people decide to opt for the color change. Sure, okay. So, so when we're putting, when we're considering uh, a transom application here yeah. for this boat with a set of underwater lights and the owner is going to start by giving you his desires. Yeah. He's going to give you an idea as to what his color ranges are going to be, mm -hmm. whether they're specific or he wants full control. Yeah. And then the other thing he's probably going to share with you is going to be where is he going to use his boat mm -hmm. and how does he use his boat? Absolutely. Is he, uh, is he a, a 45 year old bachelor who wants to be entertaining in Miami mm -hmm. and, and have boom boom music going all the time? Or is it a family situation where they're going to have, uh, you know, the grandkids on board yep. and they're going to have National Geographic behind their boat every night while they're anchored up at Staniel Key? Absolutely. So uh, how would we consider putting our lighting in here? I, as, as you just said, all those factors need to be the questions asked, what their expectations are, where they're going to use the boat is a real key. Okay. And what really I try and ask as well, what their experience with underwater lights are. Um, underwater lights come in a couple of different varieties, either okay. surface mount or through hole. Okay. The difference being with a surface mount, the entire light is on the outside of the boat with a sure. very small wire going through. Okay. And a, a through hole is a larger hole anywhere from two and a half to four inches which accommodates the light and which can be then be serviced from inside the boat. So the surface mount gives you a smaller hull penetration, Absolutely. but you have to take the boat out of the water or use a diver to do service on it. Absolutely. The pros of those are they are less expensive, easier to install, smaller hole in the boat. Okay. Cons are if there ever is an issue, you've got to work that around your haul out schedule or schedule an expensive haul out to fix. Okay. And they cannot be as bright as well as the traditional through hole styles. Okay. Uh, so it's a cost benefit versus the output. Um, if the owner comes to me and says, I want the brightest lights you know, in the world, they can't have surface mounts. Okay. Um, a lot of people I talk with as well, I much prefer the surface mount. This is the people who've not really done lights before because they don't want to drill large holes in their boat. Right. But when you explain to them there are 15 penetrations right here that are perfectly safe and probably another 20 underneath the boat, if right. it's done correctly by a professional, right. you'll never have an issue. So okay. a larger hole, smaller hole, so long as it's done correct, will be absolutely fine. Okay. And a, but final benefit on the through holes is that pretty much all the through holes you can buy from any company have to be approved by Lloyds and ABS okay. because it's a through hole penetration which is acts as a water barrier. So you have class considerations and you guys comply with those class considerations. We've always complied, every single one of our lights has class, um, but with surface mount lights that you can go and buy from West Marine, um, 
there is no need for them to have those class considerations. Sure. So maybe they, again, maybe they're not built to the same standards that the through hole lights yeah, are. Yeah, there aren't too many ABS class center consoles out there. Well, there so. really aren't. And that's really where those surface mount lights exist. They right. should be on trailer boats that can be pulled out and in all the time. Okay. On something like this, I've, and trust me, I've seen many surface mounts put on boats of this size. Right. And in my mind, it's a mistake because, you know, a downtime for a through hole light, if you were to buy one of our lights and you had an issue, you could take the insert out, send it to us for repair, and we'd have it back in 48 hours. With a surface mount, you're talking either maybe six to 12 months before you come out to actually get it repaired. So that brings an interesting question to mind. If we, if we install the housing mm -hmm. on the transom of the boat, for example, and we have our LED light insert that is in that housing and it's threaded in place, mm -hmm. if a new technology or let's say I own the boat and I mm -hmm. only wanted a blue spectrum of light, mm -hmm. but I sell the boat to you and you decide you want the full 256 color range, mm -hmm. can we take that insert out, leaving the housing in place and modify or update or replace it? Now, I'll be very careful with this answer because with our company underwater lights, yes, you can. Okay. Every single light we've ever made can be repaired, replaced or upgraded. Okay, that makes uh, that's a big difference. I did a boat over here uh, last year, it was 130 foot. In, lights were installed in 1997 and all we did is pull out the bulbs and put color change LEDs straight in. Okay. With other companies, they they change their housing design every time there's a slight new light comes out. So their inserts from five years ago won't fit what's coming out now. We make a very conscious effort that we perfect, perfected basically the mount, the housing and that we leave that. We don't change that okay. and we just change the technology it becomes available. So, so that's one of the big differences between underwater lighting and maybe some of the other companies absolutely. that you maintain consistency in your housing. Absolutely. And if any of uh, the brokers who may be watching this do have, you know, older lights on the boat before ripping them out or condemning them, give us a call first because we may be able to do it at the at the dock and just put in the new stuff and also um, uh, just clean everything up and just make sure everything's good to good to go. OK, well, speaking of cleaning everything up. You know, one of the things that we, we see quite often is there'll be growth on the outside mm -hmm. of the housing or growth on the outside of lens. Yep. And of course, that deteriorates the, the ability for the light to produce the, the effect that we're looking for. There's a boat right over here that has some lights in it. Can you give us a little insight as to what these lights are? Absolutely. I mean, without naming uh, companies, these are actually a slightly older unit, uh, LED still, but from you know, a few years ago. Uh -huh. um, and as you can see, they've got quite a few on the back of the boat. Just right. and that was from a throwback from the older LED series. Okay, uh, you had to do more to do the same kind. Let's of let effect. our cameraman zoom in just a little bit yeah, so yeah. he can see and show the audience what we're talking about with the older technology of lights. So as you're saying, we've got several lights here in order to produce the effect that we're looking for. Exactly, and they. Again, I don't want to bash the competition. No, of course really not. That of much. course not. Uh, but with those type type of lights, it's going to create a nice effect out the back. Okay. Uh, but with what we're going to do on this boat with our new QTS series of light, I mean, okay. in the Bahamas, the lights we're going to put on here are going to go out 100, 150 feet. Wow. And that's kind of what we look for as a standard. Um, with the color change, it's just going to, like I said, depending on the color you're on at a particular time and where you are, it's just going to look absolutely sensational. So what you're saying is that the technology has advanced to a degree that we can use fewer lights mm -hmm. to provide the same effect, which you know, if we're talking about fewer hull penetrations, that's got to make everybody feel a little bit better. Absolutely. We've got the newest technology. We're able to have a brighter light, a full range of colors. Mm -hmm. So it gets better and better every day. Absolutely. I mean, back in the old days in 2005, 2006, uh, a light was produced uh, called the RFB 108, if you remember that, Lee, from Ocean LED. And that was 108 watts and about 1,100 lumens. Okay. We now produce a light that's roughly the same wattage and is 25,000 lumens. Oh my God. So it's a 25 fold increase over the last 15 years. Okay. But LED technology gets better and better every day. The uh, output gets better with, and it becomes less expensive as well. Right. So I've seen some of the LED lights, like these that are behind us on this boat, where when, you, when it's turned off and you look at it, you're basically looking at a circuit board mm -hmm. with light emitting diodes on it. I've also seen other ones that when you look at the light, you see a lens and it appears that the, the, the circuit board is back behind it. Yes. Is it, are these different ways of creating your light? And it's, tell it's, me about that a little bit. The, the way, when it has a lens in front of the LED, that's a slightly older way of what's called collimating the LED. Okay. The idea is that light comes out from the LED at all angles and the collimator, very much like a reflector in a halogen overhead light, focuses it forward rather than out the sides. Okay. With the latest LEDs, 
Uh, you can really get a, a, away with not having to do that by pushing the circuit board close to the lens. Okay. Uh, because with underwater lights, now because they're so powerful, they project far enough, but now you want the spread. So sure. in the early days, you took what limited power you have and pushed it in a direction that was useful. Now we have so much power available, we now want to spread it out. So you, being on a sport fish, you must have looked over the side and seen those dark triangles between each light. Absolutely, yeah. So that, with the new lights that have a 140 degree beam, that can be pretty much eliminated just by putting four lights so on So you have boat. a full range of light instead of having any gaps in there. Exactly, so now it's like a wash of light rather than individual jets of light. Okay, all right. So the technology has advanced pretty significantly, starting with the old days of halogen and going up into xenon for the brightness. Uh, we've eliminated our temperature issues. Uh, we've come up with different ways of making installations where we can do surface mount or hull penetration. Is there anything that you guys are thinking about as next? What's what's uh, what's new? I know it's going to fit in one of your housings. Well, it's going to fit in one of our housings. Actually, the next thing we've done or already started is we're now changing the material that we're making all of our housings out now to titanium. Oh, okay. Um, so the idea behind that is everything at the beginning in 91 was made out of 316 stainless. Sure. Then it moved to naval bronze, which everybody uses. Right. But now we're going to move to titanium because it's a lot stronger. We want the housings we're selling now to last 50 years. Uh, with just the ability to upgrade. Sorry, I'm going to wipe my eye real no, quick. No worries. And also, there seems to be a huge issue, not around for Florida and such, but when boats are moored up, galvanic corrosion seems to be more of a, 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 an issue uh, with free voltage in the water, which attacks all of the components on the boat. And using titanium, which is still bonded to the system, will ensure the life of the housing, even if it's not down to your issue, it's the boat next door leaking voltage. Um, so we've already made the change to titanium on the QTS. It will be moving to the QT80, um, and then our larger lights will be sometime the next year. When we so just change. like any other hull penetration, uh, we don't just we don't just drill a hole and shove a light in there and wire it up to the battery and let her go. Yeah, we got to make sure that we've got it, since it's a metallic housing, we've got to worry about electrolysis. Mm -hmm. We've got to make sure that she's incorporated into the bonding system. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that the uh, you know the weekend warrior is really going to do unless he's pretty well experienced. You want to bring in a professional. You want to bring in a professional. I mean, not just um, getting the lights installed, like you said, to the bonding system. If you do have a cord boat, um, you want to make sure that you take out a piece of the coring and then fill it with a hard epoxy, just so when you clamp you down the two together. Yeah, you don't want to be at that hole to crush. Right. Um, so that could lead to issues of water seepage or anything. But it's the same with any through hole on the boat. You want to make sure it's done correctly. And also, one thing that we did mention, I think, a little earlier, maintenance. So the lens issues, you know, we recommend prop speeding on the outside of the, okay. the metal, light speed on the front. And also, we recommend in our manual, every 18 months, just go down there, unscrew it, pull it out, lube it up with some dielectric and put it back. Okay. So Because if, if you haven't touched the light for 20 years, in a boat, in a wet area like this, right. it's, you know, you're going to have to put a bit of elbow grease no, into absolutely. it. No, so absolutely. Preventative maintenance and regular maintenance, just like your diver, is definitely what we'd recommend. Well, I think in a matter of a couple of minutes, we've gotten a pretty good sense of uh, where underwater lighting started, mm -hmm. uh, what it was all about early in the game, and where we are today. I think it's been an interesting segment. Zach, thanks so much for giving us the time oh, here at LMC. At There's a lot of interesting stuff to do in the uh, underwater lighting realm. And if you need something, you need some questions answered, I'm sure folks will have your contact information from the website. We're happy to get together with you and, and find out what they need to know. Absolutely. I mean, I just hope that people, you know, there are so many options available when it comes to underwater lighting. If any of your customers have a question, just tell them to give me a call. I've been doing this for 20 years now. That makes me feel very old. Not bad for a guy who's 32 <laughs> years old. 35. Thanks very much, folks. <laughs>